So let's let's start this afternoon. This this very very exciting presentation. We've been working on it a lot, and I deeply hope that you guys like it. Uh, I promise you will be different, very different. And uh, first of all, I would like to be very thankful to Jean Philippe and all the amazing organization, all the people behind this Dimensions XR project, which is a for me it's a true true dream to be part of this. And um, yeah, hope, hopefully you will really like what we're going to present today, which you all feel fine because, you know, we are all living in very hard times. And yeah, hopefully you guys are feeling fine. And during this period, hopefully what we're going to see today will be useful for, for this situation. Uh, first of all, I apologize because of the fact that I'm wearing the mask, but right now I am inside the university and we have to wear it all the time. And actually I'm, I am here with me with Gabriel, who is right here, you can say hello. Right. So Gabriel is right here with me and because he will be my virtual cameraman. And later on, you will understand what it doesn't mean. So we are both in the same room, so we have to be with the mask, but I promise you that you will be able to see me without my mask, at least my avatar, my virtual version. So my name is Pau Guardiola, I'm UX Multimedia Director at UCAM, Catholic University of Murcia. I am very, very passionate about the XR technology, especially when it comes to education. And I believe that this technology has the potential. And now, actually, it has not only the potential, but the responsibility to change the education and to lead us all to a, to a better world. So let's keep going. So those are the main four topics, the main four topics that we are going to talk about. First of all, we're going to talk about the challenge that we are all facing right now, and the big opportunity that we have ahead of us, especially right now because of this pandemic situation. I think it's also not only a hard situation, but it's also an opportunity. There are a lot of opportunities. Then I will show you the platform, one of the platforms at least, that we are using and why I love it so much. And we will cover different aspects like uh, the creation pipeline, some characteristics, and you know how to use it a little bit. Then I will give you a real experience that we already made in our university. I will explain you how it was this experience, and I will share with you some videos, photos, and actually the the, the experience that the the students they shared with us after this experience. And then we will also see some analytics about that class also. And finally, I would love to show you some of the future projects that we are working already. Um, yeah, and I'm really, really excited about them. So let's start, let's go ahead and let's start with the challenge. So the challenge, it's quite clear. We are all in, the, in, this, in this hard, hard situation, but as I said, this situation, it's always an opportunity. I will talk about education and education of the future, but we always have to look back how was the education in the past? And the reality is that we all been educated in a B-dimensional world. Even the, the classes themselves, the design of the class, the books, all the materials that we use right now is bi-dimensional. All the materials, even the class, as I said, there is a professor in the front side, the students in the back, and it's just bi-dimensional communication. But the thing is that, yeah, it changes, the, the pandemic changed a little bit everything. We start all of us to communicate like we are doing right now with Zoom, Meet, and other video video programs. But still, this is within inside this square. So still, we are talking about two dimensions. However, what we are teaching right now, it's in, it's not in two dimensions. When we thought about what we teach, we teach and learn things like human anatomy chemistry, architecture, those are very complex 3D structures and objects that they are very hard to understand them when you watch them just through a video or an image. You should learn them in a three-dimensional way, but how? That's the key question, no? how we can do that, all right? So this afternoon, we're gonna talk about one of these hows. So as I said, this is the big challenge. Of course, we do have nowadays amazing photos, amazing 3D objects, amazing infography about, in this case, let's talk about one specific example. 
Just, let's say we have an anatomy class about the human heart, which is very complex. Sure, we do have already a lot of images and photos like the ones that we are watching right now, right there. We have videos, very complex videos, very well detailed. Then you have, of course, those students that they can, they have the dissected object itself, the real heart. There is nothing better than grabbing one real heart, dissect, of course. But what if we can have the best from both worlds? What if we can have the spectacularity, the, the usefulness of these 3D objects, the, the, the designs and photos, but at the same time, we can have the fidelity, the, the detail of the real one. How to do that, right? So there we have, in this image, we can see the next one, an example of what I'm talking about. What if we have the 3D object of the heart, like we can see right now in here, and we can manipulate it. We can see it in a three-dimensional way, which is closer that, to the reality, because as we all know, the human heart, it's not in two dimension, it's a three dimension, very complex object, right? So, of course, all right, we all hear about this already, but we're, we're going to talk about this afternoon. It's not about what I just asked. This afternoon, I would like to give you some answers about this. We're going to take a look at the potential answers. The platform that I'm going to show you, it is very accessible, it's flexible, and very powerful enough to offer what I believe it's a true revolution. I think it's a real, real revolution and we can keep talking about this, of course, but as I said, why don't we actually go there? Why don't we fly over there and we keep this presentation in a virtual world in a 3D environment, okay? So now we, at this point of the presentation, I will ask you for a little patience. I will need like 10, 15 seconds with my colleague over here, Gabriel, to make this jump to the virtual world without getting outside from Zoom. We're going to streamline the whole conference in the virtual world, and, but you don't have to move. You will still be in Zoom and hopefully you will see the whole presentation in here, okay? So let's jump. Vamos allá. Eh, un segundo. Cuando quieras. All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the virtual world. Welcome to Mozilla Hubs. And especially welcome to right here this is the great great hall of guild hall in london this amazing building that we can see right now it's a building made in with this amazing technology called photogrammetry we're going to talk about photogrammetry later on in this presentation and it was made by one of the one a user called david flitch he made this amazing project and he lives on uh, leave it in Sketchfab, he lives, he lives this 3D environment available for everybody to download it right on Sketchfab, right on the internet. So we, will be, we were able to download it, prepare it, and use it this afternoon to have this presentation in such an amazing environment. So hopefully the, the British people, the, the, the Council of London, because this was right now used to be this building was used to be the town hall of London. And now this afternoon will be this scenario where we're going to keep our presentation. I want to put the presentation in full screen. Over here, we have we will keep the presentation that we can see over there. Now, before keeping on going with the presentation, let me talk to you a little bit more about this scenario. Actually, let me show you a real image of this scenario that we have over here. Come with me, camera. Here we can see some images of this town hall, the real scenario over there. And as you can see, we will ask for our cameraman. Right now you, you are watching the image that our virtual cameraman, Gabriel, is offering to you. And we are streamlining everything with a broadcasting application called OBS. 
and through Zoom, we are offering you this, this production. So come with me, Gabriel. Let's keep going with the presentation. Perfect. All right. So here we are. Gabriel, it was on. So as I said, this is Mozilla Hubs. And now we're going to keep talking with the presentation over here. All right, so as I said, I'm going to talk about Mozilla Hubs, which is so we're going to recreate this over here. You can see the presentation. So we're going to connect everything so we can keep the presentation. Just give me a second. Uh, over here, perfect. And I can go over there, uh, over here. All right, so now I come from here. Just a second. All right, and I will refresh. Perfect. Vale, no, no me sale. No me sale la presentación. So we're gonna we're going to reconnect the, the presentation. Just a second. Okay. No me sale. Segundo. Vale. la volvemos a comentar. Just a second. We are right now re-entering the, pre the presentation. Perfect. And now we are going to start. There we are. So now you should be watching the whole presentation. Second. It is loading. You see, these are all the things that they can happen. <laughs> because right now, no, 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 Okay, give me a second. I go to Firefox. Perfect. I restart. I'm reloading my Mozilla. So let me tell you what I'm doing right now. I am connected with this Oculus Quest 2. I will get inside this program through Oculus Quest 2. Perfect. And I am loading because I will stream live what I'm watching right now with my glasses, so you guys all can see exactly what I'm watching. But we need also to connect the presentation that was made on Google Drive right straight into this Mozilla Hubs uh, project. So I can see exactly what you guys are watching right now. We've been doing this the whole week, and oh, it always works. But of, of course, when it comes to work, it didn't. <laughs> but just give me a second, and, and it, will, it will work. Perfect, getting inside. Entrando, perfect. Enter. There I am. Now while we are talking. Vale, ahora el camelo. Perfect. No, no, de la izquierda. Ya está. Uh, perfect. Mark. 
Perfect. Now I can see in the background the image of the presentation. No. I don't know. Just give us a second because we are having some troubles. So. Yeah, it's okay. We wait. Sorry about that. Oh, are you still with us? I think we lost our presenters, but let's give another five minutes.
Okay, sorry about that. Sorry about that. We are in now. Okay, we are here, Paul. Let me explain to you what actually happened. So the thing is that we are trying to make this jump. We already tried it several times and it worked perfectly. But of course, when it has to work, it's when it never works. <laughs> sorry, sorry, deeply. I'm sorry about that. It's okay, Paul. Let's, let's go on and don't worry. I'm actually reinstalling the, the application because I have to okay, have to restart. Moment. Okay, activate. And um, motor one, motor one, the Firefox. Reinicio. Vale, se ve ya. So as I said, this is the big jump. And <laughs> as I said, it's not easy at all, but thank God it's right now working, streaming, and we are live. Okay. Now I just need to share the presentation over here. ¿Dónde está? Está aquí. Ok. Y de aquí me lo paso. Yeah, I can tell you, hopefully it will work it this few seconds, few minutes that we, it took us to restart the whole presentation because when, you know, when something fails, it fails badly. <laughs> and it failed it in the very worst moment. Here it is. Perfect. Perfect. So now it looks like we are everything ready. You guys can hear me? Yes, Paul, we're still here. Okay, I truly apologize for the whole situation. And so we let's keep going. As I as I said, it's not easy to make this jump, but it really works it because I'm going to talk about this uh, program and I really can show you some images of the program, but the, the best thing is that you can actually watch it. So as I said, Mozilla Hubs, it's, uh, Mozilla Hubs, it's, a, it's an open source project by, made by Mozilla. It's an open source made by Mozilla. It's a, it's a web VR platform, which means that you can actually get inside this platform just through the website, which is actually amazing and makes this platform very, very interesting. The second thing is that it is full, 100% fully customizable, everything, spaces and objects. It's a collaborative platform. So that means that 
everybody can join us, not just like you guys are joining us through Zoom, but actually to be in here with us. And then it's also scalable. That means that you can make it as big and huge as you need. And of course, it's awesome. It's awesome always that it, when it works, obviously, when it doesn't, like a few minutes ago, it's kind of painful, but thank God now it's working and we can keep with the going with this presentation. So first of all, as I said, it's an open source platform. It's an open source platform. So that means that there is a lot of people behind this platform. It has an amazing community behind and that keeps updating it every day and it keeps improving this amazing project. The Discord community, especially, it is very active and they have weekly meetings every, every week. They have meetings where they discuss how to improve this platform. Then I have to tell you, they don't have any kind, I don't have any kind of professional relationship with Mozilla. It's just that I found this application by, you know, by, by an NDPI. I didn't look for it and I thought it was so, so powerful, but I have no relationship with them and just presented it to you because I think it's a very powerful platform. Um, you know, so the second characteristic that this platform has is that it, since it's web-based, that means that you can actually access to this platform nearly with anything that you have. Of course, you can access with your browser directly on the, on the computer. You can access also with the browser of your phone. You can access with an, a tablet or an iPad. And of course, like I am doing right now, you can access here with your headsets. Of course, with the headsets, it's the, the best experience because it's a more immersive one. But this is very interesting, why? Because it means that we can start using this platform from right now, from today, because everybody has a tablet, everybody has at least a phone or a computer. And you know what? In order to work with it, just you just have to share one link and it works perfectly. So the, the third characteristic that Mozilla Hubs has is that it is, 100% fully customizable. That means that you can insert objects in here in a very, very easy way. Actually, you can see over here in this GIF, animated GIF, you can see how easy it is to drag from your desktop right inside this platform with the right inside the browser, just drag on and it starts magically in here. This is what we did in order to build all the scenario that you can see over here, starting with this virtual screen over here or this over here, there, here I have my PDF notes, actually if the cameraman, Gabriel can come here a little bit. You can see that this is a, it's a PDF that I am using right now and I'm changing and I have here all the notes. Everything is fully customizable in this platform. And the way to do it is just that simple, just drag and drop this PDF on the browser and it magically appears in here. So the third characteristic that it has which is probably the, the most interesting one, is that it is 100% collaborative. What, is, what does it mean? That it means that everything that we design in here could be shared with others. Other people can share, can come here, join us and experience this at the same time. This means that this platform has a huge potential when it comes to education. How you can make others to join you? It's not so simple, just share the link or you ask them to go to hub.link.com, you share the code and they are right there. So the final characteristic is that it is our platform 100% scalable. That means that they can, you can actually have your own hubs. That means that you can have your own avatars, your own scenarios, the URL could be 100% customizable. You can download the whole code and install them install it on the Amazon Web Services. Of course, this has a cost, but uh, this offers a huge, huge potential when it comes to some business projects can be 100% developed within inside this platform. Um, so let's keep going. And now we're going back again. Remember this slide right before this pandemic uh, crisis of all the connections that we had that it didn't work the application at the same time. Remember, we were talking about this example and we were talking about the human heart and how to learn about it. So we said that there are already here, we have already a lot of 3D objects. We have videos and of course we have the real heart. But in this platform, 
since we are in a 3D environment, we can do this. Can come over here and let me show you. We have here, there we are. Now you should be watching right now a 3D structure of a human heart, which I can handle with my own hands, can grab them, can make it bigger, can make it smaller. See? Maybe you can even Gabriel can manage to see my my glasses. Punto de vista mis gafas, Gary. You can see also my point of view at some point of the presentation because as I as you say, as you saw, it's not easy to set up everything, but you can also see my, my point of view, but especially because of the fact that you can see over here this 3D object. See, right now you can watch my point of view. I can grab with my own hands, I can make it smaller, bigger. In this platform, we can we have also this pen tool that it's very useful for educators because they can grab the pen and they can type on it, write like I'm doing right now. And the students, they can watch exactly what you are doing. You can do it and you can change the color. You can change how big it is, everything, everything within inside this 3D world, 3D environment. So let's keep going with the presentation. What do you think? It's pretty interesting, right? So let's go next, but, but of course, like every presentation, it needs, go next, it needs uh, tools to make it grow, okay? So in this case, I'm going to talk now about the tools that we have surrounding hubs, tools that you can use, applications that you can use in order to make this experience 100% customizable and in order to make it useful for education. First of all, we have, we were going to talk about the creator tools and then we're gonna talk about the assets and libraries. So let's start with the creator's tools. So inside this platform in Mozilla Hubs, the guys from Mozilla, they made, uh, they made an application also web-based called Spoke. And it is very interesting because Spoke allows you to actually create scenarios like we are watching right now. And within inside the application, you can see, this is actually a, uh, a GIF, animated GIF that shows you how easy it is to customize your own uh, space. It's the creator's tool from Mozilla, as I said, it's 100% based on the website. And it's also made by the guys of Mozilla. It's established on all the scenarios, but not only the scenarios, it also allows you to establish key points like the starting points where people start in the scenario whenever they get inside or you can put objects in order to replicate them, just like I did with the human heart a few minutes ago. I prepared it bef behind the screen in order to bring it into the, into the scenario. Everything was set up before on, on Spock. So let's go next to, the, other, to the, the second part of the whole experience. It's not just about where, but also about who, about the avatars. This is another key part of the virtual reality experience, especially when it comes to education. Why? because the avatar is, the, is one of the key parts of the immersive education experience. We want to create an exciting and collaborative experience. And for that, you need nice, good looking avatars. And actually the guys from the world 3D, they created a website called Ready Player Me, where you can create your own avatar for free, just uploading your selfie. It automatically creates the avatar and you can also customize it and put it on Mozilla Hubs right straight. Very easy, very clean, and very, very fast. So if we go next, now we have the scenarios, we have the avatars, and the third part of the whole experience, of course, is the, the objects, the, the tools, the, the, the objects that we're going to use within inside this 3D environment. So there are a lot of libraries outside. We have uh, libraries like Sketchfab, Sketchup, it's like a Sketchfab, it's like a YouTube of 3D objects. They have thousands and thousands of objects. Some of them, they are actually 100% free and open for everybody to download it. Some of them, they are, you have to pay for them and some of them are really worth it. And actually you can see what you can see over here 
this is part of the future when it comes to the work. I can see here virtual architects. I can see here uh, professional uh, designers that they will start designing 3D objects that they will be sell on this market. This is a huge market already, and it will become bigger, bigger, and bigger as we talk. So there are a lot of platforms for this. We can, we have also, let's go back. Mm -hmm. So we have platforms like uh, Blender, or so we have, sorry, we have platforms like, like Sketchfab. We have also uh, 3D Warehouse, and we have actually a lot of platforms where we can download all this material. And then we have applications like Blender, which is a 3D program, it's open source. And once you download this material, you can prepare it before bringing it in, inside uh, Mozilla. So let's go next. Now we're going to talk about a true, a real, real experience. I'm going to share with you a real experience that we have in the university within inside Mozilla Hubs and how was experience. So let's go. And we're going to talk about, first of all, the objectives of the experience. Then we're going to talk about the, the actual class. I will show you some photos and videos. And then we're going to talk about also about the results of the, of the experience. So first of all, the objectives of the experience. It was a class, uh, it was an introductory class for physical science and sports degree here at UCAM University. And the, the subject of the class was the sailing sports. And we have three amazing uh, pioneer professors, uh, Aaron, Francisco, and Sofia. And they contacted me and we were talking about what we can do because this was during the pandemic and we couldn't bring our students to the beach in order to show them the, the windsurf and everything. So we had to think about how we can do this without going outside from our houses. So we said, let's make it virtually. So first of all, we, we need to teach them how to learn the fundamentals of the windsurf table. That's why actually we create this windsurf table, the 3D version of the windsurf table. And actually, you know what? Since we are in a 3D environment, let's bring this 3D object over here because I have it right here. Let me show you. Here it is. Here it is. This is actually the windsurf table that we used in the class. As you can see, it's 100% uh, it's customized with the colors and the branding of the university. And students were able to grab it, to manipulate it, etc., in a very, very easy and um, yeah, very immersive way. So it's not just you're watching the professor who is showing you some images of the Windsor, but you can actually walk around it. You can look the, the, all the different details, etc. So let's go next. Now we're going to talk about the actual uh, next the actual class. Here we can see an uh, image from the class where it, we took like, the, the class. We prepared this whole scenario. Let's go next because I'm going to show you another point of view of the class. So the students who were, they started over here in the entrance and then they move all the way up until, the, until this space over here where they conducted the whole class. So let's go next and we can see the first part of the entrance. This is the entrance part and as I said, in the entrance, students found this little poster that you can see over there where they were able to see the basic controls because of course, this is an active class. This is a place where you can come inside as a student, but you have to move. It's not like Zoom where you are basically just hearing or just talking. Here, you have to move. This is a more active environment. And this uh, little demo shows our students how to move in the, within inside the class. For most of them, it was the first time within Inside Hubs, but I was very impressed about how easy it was for them to start moving around because it's actually quite, quite simple. And within a matter of few minutes, all of them, they were moving around and gathering and talking like it was something so natural. That really, really impressed me a lot. So let's go a little bit on the next slide. Here we have the second part of the scenario, one of the key parts of the scenario, because in here we have the materials scenario. So starting from the left, we have the windsurf table, the complete version. Then we divided it in, like we have the table on one side and the sail separated on the other side. 
so we were able to manipulate them separately. This was a key part of the of the whole peda, peda, let's say the pedagogical process of the class because as we will see later in the video, the, the key part here was to learn how to move the sail, how to move the hands, and how to move everything depending on the direction of the of the of the wine. So actually, to show the direction of the wine, we put we put also a, a little bellet, like a little arrow that was showing the students and the professors where the air came from. So let's go next to the second part. And actually on the wall, we were able to attach the PDFs in order to be able to use it in the, in the class. This is very interesting also because most of our professors, most of our students, they have uh, PDFs, they have so much material and we don't want this material to get lost. We want this PDF to use them in, within inside the class. And in here we can see how Professor Aron was showing his students using this pen also, like a laser pointer view, and using these PDFs. There is another interesting part in this uh, scenario, which is the, the branded scenario, this part. This could, looks like it's not that interesting, but actually it is. Why? Because at the end we are in a 3D environment where we can customize everything, but we are still within inside the university. And we don't want our students to have the feeling that they are nowhere but in their university. So we put all our branding, just like we did in here. And we, I will invite right now our cameraman, Gabriel, to see over here. We can see our UCAM logo right just there. Because we need you guys to have the feeling that you, we are in Zoom, we are in the environment, but still this is a UCAM university class. So we put all these logos over here. So we go next. To the, to the fourth part. Um, this is of course the most important, the most important part is where we spend most of the time teaching, learning and sharing experiences all together, professors and students. So actually, let me show you over here. Uh, now that we've been exploring the whole class and let's take a look to the video that we have of the whole class. Let me, let me, let me show you the video. So you should be watching the video right now. Um, we can see over here, we have the professor in the background. The professor was the only one who, well, two of the professors were the only ones who were wearing the, the glasses. The rest of the students, they were only wearing the, you know, they weren't wearing the, the glasses. Okay, so that was the video, let's go next. Here we can keep watching the video over there. So this is the point of view of one of the professors with the hands. Um, I don't know. So here we can see the rest of the students. We can see the table over there. See now we have the professor who is grabbing the 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 sail separately from the table. Here we can see the rest of the students. They were gathering around their professor. It was very, very interesting. At the beginning, of course, they had to learn how to move around, but within a matter of 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it was so natural for them. I remember that at a certain point of the class, the professor invites students to gather in between small groups of three, and they were all moving around separately, and they were gathering, gathering together in groups of three, and they were interacting just like they were in the real, in the real life. Actually, the class was supposed to be only like an introduction class about 20, 30 minutes, but they spent more than one hour, one hour and a half in, inside here without losing, they totally lost sense of the time. Just like we are doing right now because we are losing the, ten, the sense of the time. So we have to move, keep going. All right, so those are the results of the questionnaire that we did to our students and professors. As you can see over here, we can see that most of them, they were inside the, the project with their Google Chrome browser. Some of them, they were with the phones or the MacBook. And some of them, they were with the Oculus Quest, the head mount, the, the, the Oculus Quest, like the ones that I'm wearing right now. Uh, but the amazing, the, the amazing thing about this is that they were all together in the same thing, in the same place at the same time. 
So this is uh, another part of the questionnaire in the next one. So we asked them also about the adaptation of the, of the materials. And as we can see on the results, not all of them, they were very happy about the adaptation of the programs, which is very interesting. And it shows us something very, very important when it comes to prepare a virtual immersive class. Of course, we can use the PDF that we already have, but this shows us that we should prepare new material. We should prepare materials that they come from, they, they are, we have to think about the 3D environment and create 3D materials, not just the two-dimensional materials. We can keep using the PDFs, of course, but our students, they will start more and more demanding higher quality materials, three-dimensional materials in order to learn and to improve their, their learning experience. So here we can see the overall experience satisfaction. I was totally amazed about this uh, response because it was truly very, very high. And in general, professors and students, they were very excited and they are, we are really actually preparing more and more classes. Uh, and yeah, we are really, really excited about these results of the, of the class. So we go next also to see some of the results, not only within inside the class, but also outside the class. This was a very, very unique class. And we have a lot of, uh, lot of newspapers, national newspapers. They ask us about this experience. Even here we have a quote from Alejandro Blanco, who is the president of the Spanish Olympic Committee. And he posted a video congratulations ourselves. We were very proud of that. And yeah, we have also, we have to say also that we were very happy and very lucky to have Sofia Toro, uh, the one that we can see over here as one of the professors, because Sofia right here, she, she won uh, on 2012, she won a gold Olympic medal on sailing. Then she is actually very, very active on social media and she helped us to spread the whole news and the whole experience on the, on the media. It also appears on Diario Marca. Marca is the most read, read the newspaper in Spain. Uh, it's, it's about sports and they also cover the, the news on their newspaper. So now we can see on the next slide some, uh, some of the thoughts of the professors that they were in the class. For instance, Aaron, he was saying that he was very happy about the experience. And I quote, it seems to me that the platform is impressive. It has impressive possibilities. I believe that from the teachers that we have to improve the dynamics of the classes. Of course, I cannot agree more and adapt the possibility to action um, the students have. So we have to break this barrier of, I am talking and you are just hearing me. And this environment allows you to have so much more active and immersive uh, education. So uh, Sophia also admits that she was very clumsy when it comes to technology. Sophia, over here, she was actually, it was the very, very, very first time she was wearing a headset, so she was totally lost. Um, but I have to tell you that uh, she was, she's training a lot. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised that eventually she becomes the number one when it comes to handle the VR headsets. Because in the end, she's a winner and she's a winner, whatever space, virtual or real. So let's go next. And we're gonna talk about this last part of the presentation. We're gonna talk about the future projects. And I will show you some images of the projects that we are working already. This like the, the windsurf class was like the very first one. And it guides us to more uh, experiences. So those are two of them where I am more excited about. On one side, we have the fascinating experience where our students will learn about the pandemic virus uh, and watch all the structures and dive into the molecules. We're gonna show you some of them right now. And on the other half, on the other, on the other side, we have over here a uh, plumbing installation where made, I'm preparing this class with Professor Jose Enrique. And I'm really excited about this class because we are going to use photogrammetry technology. That's the same technology that allows us to enjoy this amazing scenario inside hubs. The same technology are going to be used in this class in order to recreate a plumbing, plumbing installation that before this pandemic situation, professor were able to go there with his students. Now they cannot, but at least they can visit it virtually and in a more immersive experience. So let's go with the, the first class about COVID. As I said, we created this uh, a 3D scenario. We are going to prepare this as an introductory class for SARS-CoV-19. 
we will have PDFs, images, and of course, we will have uh, 3D objects, like the next one I will come show you. Let's go next. And in here, let me show you something that you might be quite familiar with already. So over here, we have a 3D molecule of the coronavirus. This little thing over here is what is making us all suffer so much. But in here, the students will be able to have it and explore it in a more active way. And something very interesting about this project is that this object that we found, it's not only something that we can move and we can scale, we can actually also come inside because it's, it's so well done that if you go inside, actually you can come with the camera over here. If you come inside, you can see the whole structure of the of this uh, virus, starting with the DNA and all the proteins, etc. Actually, I can tell you that when the professor saw it, he totally loves it. Um, yeah, it's it's very. I cannot wait for students to come in here and start learning. So, let's eliminate the coronavirus. Let me show you also another thing which is very interesting for the class. Over here, we can see an actual structure of one of the proteins that we have in the coronavirus over here. This is one structure. Ah, see over here, we have also one of our colleagues that he can join us. Hola, Samuel, he's going to join us. So you can see how other students, they can come around and they move and they can see exactly what I'm watching. Samuel over here, he is also with his computer. I am with the headset and we're both here in the same space and the same scenario. So there we have this 3D object. It's, uh, it's one of the proteins of the, of the coronavirus and we're going to use this in the, in the class. Perfect. So let's now see this, the, the other project that we have on civil engineering. Oh, we only have five minutes assuming we are not leaving any Next. time for questions, all right? Oh, before that, we're going to see a little video about the whole, whole experience. And here you can see the scenario that we are already preparing, this laboratory. We put these uh, 3D objects within inside here. Um, yeah, it's, I'm really, really excited about this project because I think it's going to be very, very interesting for the students. Um, also for, for Silvia, who is Silvia Montoro, is the professor with who I am preparing this. And then we have this plumbing installation class that we are preparing. As I said, I'm really, really excited about this class because uh, as I said, again, it's a photogrammetric project. Um, we're going to use this in order to show our students like if they were right there. Let me eliminate over here this. But why I'm so excited about this photogrammetry technology. So if we go next to the next slide, you can see that this is what photogrammetry is all about. So as I said, photogrammetry it's a technology that allows us to create objects and real scenarios in, in 3D. Think about photogrammetry like uh, taking photos in three dimensions. And it is, it is a, it's not a new technology. It's a technology that we have already for several years. But nowadays, thanks to the technology and the advancement on the technology, it's becoming more and more easy to use it because now it actually comes with the new iPhone 12 Pro, it comes also, the iPad Pro has a little scanner. And of course, it's not still perfect, but step by step, we're going to be able to make our own photogrammetry objects. So imagine what this could mean when it means to use Hubs, which is a platform who allows you to embed, you can bring those photogrammetry 3D objects within in here, inside here, and you can enjoy it with the rest of your, your students. So that's why I'm really, really excited. Actually, let me show you the, this 3D photogrammetry uh, plumbing scenario that Professor actually made it. Let me bring it over here. There it is. Over here it is. So I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna scale it up so we can see it like if we were right there. Perfect, so let me just grab it over here. Perfect. So now that is right here, you can see 
actually with the camera, we can move a little bit up and down. Perfect, now it is right there. So now we have this photometric scene that was made with from the professor Jose Enrique, and we're going to be able to use it with our students. Um, yeah, you can actually come in, come in here, come inside with me, and I'm gonna make just like, like the professor can do that he will be able to show all the different parts and think about that see all the little details that we have this is a real space this is a real scenario and the professor will be able to teach uh, the students in a very very creative in a very immersive way perfect so let's eliminate this this and we are going to go towards the end of the, uh, the class let me actually show you a little video also about this plumbing scenario that we are preparing. Over here we can see three of the students and the professor and we are testing the class already. So see, professor is going to grab the pen and he is able to directly type or write on this 3D object. Very, very exciting. Uh, over there, see he, he's using this green color already. And now we're gonna move the camera also a little bit towards going closer. So we can see in a more, more detail, there yeah, we are, there we are. See, we can see all the different avatars. Perfect, so this is the, the scenario. Very important, the fact that we have also these realistic avatars. I have to tell you that in hubs, you can be nearly any, any, anybody. So when it comes to education, you try, you have to keep the avatars to look like more realistic, of course, like we are doing right now. So this is, we are going towards the end of the class. We already talked about the challenge. We covered the, one of the platforms because this is not the only one, but this is one of the, the open source. It's a free platform. And I think it's very powerful to respond to this uh, challenge. We show you the real class experience and some of the future projects. But I don't know if you notice one little detail on this virtual environment, which is that we have over here, this white horse. Why actually we have this little horse over here? Let me show you. Actually, it moves. I don't know if you notice, but it moves. Okay, it's it's. This is a white horse. And why we have uh, this white horse in in the three D scenario? So we have it in here because I want to tell you before finishing the class. I want to tell you that uh, that few months ago, well, while I was showing all this technology, few months ago, while I, while I was showing this technology to so excited to Belen Lopez, she, she was. She's the chief of virtual campus and online learning, teaching technologies here at UCAN. She told me that she was very amazed also, just like me about all of this, but she told me this uh, white horse metaphor that I want to share with you guys today, because I think it's very interesting also to keep in mind. And I would like to share it with you. So she said that if you bring a big fancy horse to the class the very first day, students will be totally amazed, okay? So this, uh, but, Few, the, the, the more that time goes by, the next week, probably the horse will be still impressive, but students, they will start to be, uh, you know, they will not notice it. But the thing is that after one month, this beautiful horse, white horse, it will start maybe smelling a little bit. It won't be white anymore. And at some point, it will be even quite useful. It will smell very bad and it will not help at all within the education experience. Why does she told me that? Because at the end, this is a great, great technology, but we don't want it to be a white horse. Because at the end, uh, at the end, the technology must be at the service of the education. So, hopefully, you guys uh, like the whole presentation. Again, I would like to be uh, very, very sorry about the, the technical aspects and why it. Oh, let's go next. The, the little problem that we had in this big, big jump, because this is a very new technology. It's still, it's, a, it's an on, under development. It's quite robust, but of course it's very new. And we have these little problems when we make this connection between the real world and this virtual world. But thank God again, we managed to, to do it. Thankfully, thank you very much to Gabriel, who is here with me uh, with all the dealing with all these technical problems. Hope, very hope you all like it. This is a, just the beginning. We are only scratching the surface of this technology and what, it's, what it can come. Um, you know, the world needs a more immersive education now more than ever. Um, you know, a brilliant future where the imaginative potential 
of our children, of our kids, uh, is in hands instead of fading apart. So hope you enjoyed this session as much as I did, and um, you learned something new today. Um, you know, I would like to be again very thankful to Jan Philippe and all the Dimensions XR crew for making this real and for inviting me to give you this speech. Um, yeah, I am now very open to, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask.